Oh, hi there. Thanks for showing up for your learning. Um, today, we're going to be looking at interpreting quadratics in context. So let's take a look. And it says here graphing technology. So feel free to use Desmos to get a quick visualization of these. But I'm going to talk about how I can visualize these without uh, using Desmos. So uh, in the first case, we have Chloe, who launches a toy rocket from a platform. The height of the rocket in feet is given by h of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 24 t plus 112, where t represents the time in seconds after launch. How many seconds have gone by when the rocket is at its highest point? So prepare a visualization. Feel free to use Desmos, but I'll show you how I just visualize these. So I know that I'm only looking at positive values of time. I'm not looking at negative values of time. So And I'm only looking at when the height of the rocket is positive. I don't need to know where it's underground. So I only need this part of the xy plane. And I can tell from here that its uh, c value is uh, 112. So that's its y-intercept. So I go ahead and see that in my mind, like here. That's 112 high. And then I know that this number here, 24t, tells me that it's rising as it crosses the y-axis. So it's going up at a slope of 24. It's going up quite uh, sharply. And then this number here, because we have a negative 16t there, negative 16t squared, I know that it's a parabola that opens downward. So eventually what goes up must come down, and it's going to look something like this. And I've been asked to find when is that at the maximum height. Okay, so I prepare my little chart of a equals negative 16, b equals 24, and c equals 1, 1, 2. And I use negative b over 2a because I am trying to find the time when this is at its highest point. And I know that that's going to be on the axis of symmetry. And it's going to be the vertex, and I can find the x value of the vertex with negative v over 2a. So let's try that. Negative 24 over 2 times negative 16 is equal to, uh, let's see, the negatives will cancel. And I could do 2 divided by 24 right away and simplify that a little bit. But maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just work it out to show you. 24 over 32. And then I can notice that both of those numbers are divisible by 8. And so that's uh, 3 over 4. Okay, So at 3 over 4 seconds, this rocket is at its highest point. Okay, So now what do I know? Well, lots of stuff. I know lots of stuff. So this is uh, 3 over 4 and then some y value. That's the value of the vertex. And I want to know, wait a minute, I think I already have the answer to the question. How many seconds have gone by when the rocket is at its highest point? I don't need to find how high it is. I just need to know how many seconds. So that's 0 0.75 seconds. That's 3 quarters seconds. Hooray! So let's look at another one. See how you visualize it, then you find out what you're looking for, and then you find what you're looking for. <laughs> okay, a rocket is launched into the air. Okay, where h of t is equal to negative 16t squared, plus 112t. Maybe if I do this, it will be nicer. Here, this way. Okay, and then this way. All right, so now I can work on this page. Okay, let's go. So um, what is the approximate domain, appropriate domain for this situation? Ah, so this is a domain and range question. I'd prefer it if they asked how long is this rocket in the air, because that's more practical. And it's the same question. I'll show you why. All right, so we have h of t, this is the height of this rocket, and that's equal to negative 16t squared plus 112t, okay? And I want to visualize that first because this is a kind of in-context question. I see that my c value is plus 0, so the y-intercept is plus 0, so it's going through here. The rocket is launched from the ground. Uh, this tells me it's rising very sharply as it goes up off the ground, but then the other number there, the a value tells me that what goes up must come down because that's negative. So the parabola opens downwards. Prepare a little chart. A is equal to negative 16, B is equal to 1, 1, 2, and C is equal to 0. All right. And we want to know what's an appropriate domain. 
Remember domain and range. Domain is what are my possible x values, in this case t values. So I want to also answer the question, how long was this thing in the air? It's the same question. All right, so what's an appropriate domain? Well, it's also related to your quadratic feature. It's like saying, when does the rocket have a positive height? Okay, so that clearly starts at zero, but it goes to the other root, and I need to find the other root. So let's use negative b plus or minus the square root. Let my hand catch up. A b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, and then I know that this is the x value of both roots, so we're going to have x is equal to negative b. Oops, that was a wrong number. Oh, yeah, it's faster if you do the right number. Okay, so I'm just substituting in for b. So b was 1, 1, 2, so I have negative 1, 1, 2. Uh, plus or minus the square root of 1, 1, 2 squared. Ain't no way I'm doing that in my head. I just don't have the patience for it. Minus 4 times a times c. Oh, c is 0. This is neat. I just know that's going to be 0, right? If one of the things I'm multiplying by is 0, then it's 0. So it's just 1, 1, 2 squared. <gasps> Look at that. I'd never need to work out the square root of 1, 1, 2 because I take the square root of it. So it's just 1, 1, 2 over 2 times negative 16. Okay, so now let's keep going. We're going to have x is equal to negative 1, 1, 2 plus or minus the square root of 1, 1, 2 squared. Okay, the square root of x squared is equal to x. So this is just equal to 1, 1, 2. All right, over uh, negative 32. Let's just work out the denominator there. All right, so x is equal to negative 1, 1, 2 plus or minus 1, 1, 2. Notice that that will give us a 0 if we use plus for one of them. Minus for the other one is going to give us the other root, all divided by negative 32. So this uh, x is equal to 0 when you have negative 1, 1, 2 plus 1, 1, 2. That's 0. Or x is equal to negative 2, 2, 4. Hey, Mr. Jennings, where did 2, 2, 4 come from? But it's negative. That's negative 1, 1, 2 minus 1, 1, 2. Okay? All over negative 32. Okay? And let's uh, pretend we don't know what that is because I don't. All right. 2, 2, 4 divided by 32, but both are negative, so that cancels, is equal to, oh, 7. Cool. Okay? So x is equal to 7. So now you need to go and look at what that means in the context of your visualization. I know that this is x is equal to 0, and this is x equals 7. So the appropriate domain for this would be 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 7. Okay? x is some number. Your inputs are numbers that go between 0 and 7. So we create an interval where x can be any number so long as it's bigger than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 7, and x is in the middle. How do I create these little statements? Well, write your smallest number, which is 0. Write your variable in between. So this, this tells me 0 is less than or equal to x. x is some number bigger than 0, or it might be 0. And then I write another one, the biggest one on the top, and that effectively like chops off the number line and says something in there between 0 and 7 is your value x. And x can roam freely, but it has to stop there, and it has to stop there. It's like those invisible fences for dogs. The dogs don't go past the invisible fences, but they have their domain inside the invisible fences. So let's put that into Desmos. 0 is less than or equal to x which is less than or equal to 7. Push enter twice. Hooray! And don't forget this important step. All right? So that's how you interpret a quadratics in context, a few examples. If you have questions, screenshot them and email them to me, and I can help you out. Bye for now, everyone.